welcome to today's episode of Candid Kaya. Today I am here with author and lifestyle coach Gabby, who is going to be talking about her experience as a master's student in theology school. Stay tuned. So, hello, Gabby. Hello. Tell everyone just a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is Gabby Simone. I am an author. I call myself the Millennial Lifestyle Architect, which is another word for a lifestyle coach. <laughs> and I'm currently uh, at Emory uh, School of Theology, and I'm studying uh, to be a potential pastor. Uh, I do women's ministry currently, and um, I love to write self-help books based on spiritual understanding, and so that's why I'm at Candler, at Emory Candler School of Theology. So go ahead and plug your books real quick. <laughs> All right, so my book, Gabby's Guide, Timely Advice from the Unlikely Expert, is currently on GabrielleSimoneB.com. Um, it's a book about finding love, and first, finding that love within yourself before you go looking for romantic love. So um, amazing book, and I've had amazing feedback on that. So if that's something that you know, you're interested in, definitely grab that. And then my next book comes out in July. I'm so excited for that, and uh, definitely look up on the website for details when that's going to be released. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Let's give her a round of applause for not one, but two books. Tell us a little bit about what happened or the moment that you did decide that you wanted to pursue a master's in divinity. Yeah, that's a good question. So most people who do go to divinity school or seminary or school of theology, their goal is to be a pastor, preacher, teacher. Um, that wasn't actually my goal for going. I was an author. I was always writing and blogging and hosting Bible studies and starting little women's groups and um, little events catered towards just equipping um, our walk, our spiritual walk, and developing that. And so um, out of being an author and seeing the needs of the people that I was meeting, I said, okay, let me go to a uh, school of theology to gain a greater understanding of spirituality and understanding of the Bible so that I can express how to get to that core of ultimate spirituality and um, just really finding the source of a why we're here and so I, I knew I couldn't do that without deeper understanding and so that's why I chose to go to a school of theology and um, it has been an amazing experience I've learned so much and I think it definitely has developed my skill set to be a better writer a better teacher and if later in life I do end up pastoring or doing some type of ministry then definitely I'll be equipped for that okay so tell us a little bit about what is entailed with theology school? Like, what options can you choose to pursue post it? Yeah, that's good. So, um, when you choose to go to a school of theology, a seminary, a divinity school, um, a lot of denominations have a certain track that um, they go on. And so, you have to be certified and licensed and get ordained in order to uh, become a pastor of a church. Uh, I'm not in a denomination that, you know, once I finish, I'll just have a church for me to pastor. Um, but most people do, and so that's their experience. Uh, for someone like me, who it's going to be a little bit more of navigating my own journey, um, you spend one year studying the Bible. You can study it in Hebrew. Uh, you're studying Greek. You're studying the Old Testament. You're studying New Testament. You're um, studying early Christianity and just all these basic you know, understandings, and then from there you do contextual education, where you serve at a, a nonprofit, a religious nonprofit. Um, I currently are, am doing my contextual education at a church, uh, and you just learn all the inner workings of serving in that area. Um, and then from there, your last year in school, you're pretty much just um, navigating your vocation, and then taking classes that just broaden your knowledge. Um, a lot of my friends pursue PhD work afterwards some do you know end up being a pastor uh and people like me will continue to release books and kind of see where life takes them when it's done but it's definitely something that you have to be drawn to it's a lot of work right so tell us a little bit about how the program structure you did mention some things about in your last year you'll do a vocation yeah. so is it a three-year program a two-year yeah. program what is it yeah so it's a three-year program and so my background was i studied at a bible college before even going to undergrad undergrad went to undergrad at georgia state university studied history and music and um, from there 
learning about religion and um, a little bit of anthropology, um, it kind of sparked my interest in and understanding more about theology and why we believe, how we've come to this understanding of beliefs surrounding the Bible and Christ and Christianity, and how can I express that in a way that people can really understand it and then find a connection in our era because a lot of people aren't knowledgeable about mm -hmm. scripture in the Bible and um, finding ways to make it appealing but also keeping its truth um, and not watering it down. And so, um, the program is really centered around your first year just giving you the basics of understanding. So it's a lot of the core classes like any other program. Uh, your second year is really about doing the work, so experiencing that. And then uh, your third year is just kind of like the final ceiling of everything that you've gained over your three years. It's very rigorous. I have some friends who actually graduated law school before and, and practiced as lawyers before coming to this program. And they're like, oh my God, it's way, this is way harder <laughs> Law school. I can believe I'm like, it. no way, you know, but it's it's a lot of hard work. It's not just using your head. There's right. a lot of emotion and a lot of like just reworking even who you are as a person, which can be taxing. Mm -hmm. And so I find that to be quite difficult, but I've enjoyed it. So obviously I'm in my lane if if I feel, you know, at home there. So. Right. So tell me, just for clarification purposes, in theology school. Do they allow you as students the opportunity to define what the Bible means in some of the mm, verses? That's good. So one of the classes that you take um, early on when you're first starting your program is about how to uh, correctly interpret. Mm. And so a lot of the Bible is based on people's opinion, right. like reading through certain lenses of their life experiences, their culture. Uh, race, gender identity, a lot of people are reading from those contexts. And so we learn how to uh, try to understand the scripture in its purest form. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, scripture is going to be something that's argued. <laughs> that's never going to stop. The interpretation of the Bible uh, is always going to be a topic of conversation. And that's why we have so many denominations. There's mm -hmm. Baptists, there's Episcopalian, Catholics, um, Lutheran. You know, there's so many denominations because people do have different viewpoints of the scripture. But um, the biggest thing that you learn from, from what I've taken away is to express it in a way that um, whatever your congregation is dealing with, Mm -hmm. They're having a place of solace, a place right. they can call home, a place that they find community and just a deeper understanding of who God is. Mm -hmm. And so as long as you walk away understanding that, I think that's the biggest um, success, not necessarily to tell people what to think. Right, right. So, and that's also difficult for people if you're learning things that are against what you've always learned. Exactly. So, Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right, Gabby, so now I'm going to get just a little bit of your advice. So question one is, what advice do you have for those who want to one day become a pastor? Sure. So I think it's so important and vital if you're going to go into being a pastor to understand why that is the vocation you chosen because you have to love people mm -hmm. and some people are called to maybe be a teacher of the word or to preach but not necessarily to pastor um, and pastors have to have a heart that is compassionate patient and long-suffering because people are taxing they can mm -hmm. take a toll on you and so I, I say do the challenging heart work of seeing do I really love people that much do I have the heart where oh God is super compassionate and I can deal with all of that right and um, secondly I'd say definitely go to school I think that it makes you such a better um, preacher and a uh, you express the word in such a better way that people can understand when you've been to school. And I know people say, well, if I've been called to this, if God called me, I don't need a school to affirm <laughs> that, which is true. But it also says study to show yourself approved. And so you want to be able to study so that you know what you're talking about mm -hmm. and you give it in a way that is helping, not hurting people. Right. So if you don't, for some that don't go to school, you find that they teach doctrine or lessons that can actually hurt their congregation rather than help. So I think school is important too. Okay, cool. So what advice do you have for maybe those who are looking to pursue divinity school or theology school, yeah. or even those who are current students who are wanting to pursue that but don't know what to do next? Mm -hmm. So I think um, going to a seminary or a school of theology 
or just any school that might be equipping you for um, being a pastor or ministry. I don't know if it's always the best place to find yourself mm -hmm. or to find your purpose or to find what you should be doing. I think it can be a tool to assist in that, but I really think that's work you should do outside of that space. Right. And then while you're in school, um, utilize it as a place to kind of strengthen your skills. Mm -hmm. And so I definitely feel that those are the most important keys <laughs> when it comes to that. Right, right. Like, don't go necessarily thinking that you're going to get a revelation. That's really the core of it. Like, I don't right. really think you go there to find God or to strengthen your faith. That's mm -hmm. not the space. Um, but it's definitely a place that can assist in that. And so the biggest thing for me was I challenged myself to know who I was before going because I didn't want it to change me just mm -hmm. to make me better. Just enhance. And so I tell people that's what it should be, an enhancement to who you are. It's an embellishment, not a place that solidifies. For some people, it is life-changing. And mm -hmm. they find who they are great. But for a lot of people, I find no. Right. <laughs> so much. Right. That's so, good to know. Yeah. All right, Gabby. So... Last question. Okay. What is just your overall hope for women who decide to pursue this degree? Yeah, I love this question. So representation matters. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I push um, every time I talk to people about women in ministry, women going to seminary and, and schools of theology, um, we're increasing in numbers in this field. A lot of that is because in the church, in the religious world, it is becoming more accepted for women to have a places of leadership, to, to take positions of leadership. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's important for women to see, and, and young ladies especially, that there are women who are called to ministry, who are walking in their call, um, despite what sometimes religious circles and, and society says. Mm -hmm. I also think that um, one thing that people forget, especially within Christianity, is Mary uh, birthed Jesus, who we believe in. She carried the word, according to um, John 1. And so if she could carry the word, so can we for our generation. And so it's important to feel empowered to do so. If you have a call, um, regardless of what people say, if you feel like God has given you gifts to use, use it. And uh, I studied womanist theology my first year and one of the things that I found so valu valuable about it was it validated those of us who feel spiritually inclined and feel that we have a message from God to share to the world mm -hmm. and so um, studies like that and, and seeing the woman who've gone before me and then being someone who could be an aspiration for the next generation I think is so important for women to pursue theology and ministry and to say God can use us too so Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, that concludes today's interview. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you for having me. I appreciate me. you for coming <laughs> on the show. Tell everyone how they can keep up with you, your website, all of that. Thank you. So you can find me on my website, Gabrielle, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, Simone, S-Y-M-O-N-E-B.com. Uh, my Twitter is Gabby Simone underscore B, Instagram, Gabby Simone underscore, underscore B. And I'd love to chat with you, so hit me up. <laughs> and we're going to be on the lookout for your next book. Yes, I'm Coming so next month. Yeah. Or your purpose and divine purpose and understanding why you're here. So awesome. I'm excited about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments for Gabby or myself, just leave them below and we'll make sure that they get answered. We thank you so much and we'll see you again next time.